Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I thought I'd talk to you guys about how to actually use your planners. I know in the planner community, a lot of times we get caught up in the latest planner trends and we buy a million planners and then we don't use any of them. So I'm hoping after today's video and after my five tips that you guys will actually be using your planners instead of just buying the planners. So the first tip is to choose the right planner. And I would say, in choosing the right planner, there's three major things that you should consider. So the first being whether you want to go digital or paper. So paper planning is obviously just on paper and digital planning is typically done on a tablet with some sort of stylus. And the most common being the iPad and the Apple Pencil, which is what I use. And what I love about it and I would say is the biggest pro of using a digital planner is that you always have the planner on you because I can just sync my planner with my phone. So through the app GoodNotes, I always have my planner on me because I'm always carrying my phone. Those of course aren't the only apps and the only tablets, but a lot of them sync with your phone, which allows you to have it on the go, which I would say is definitely the biggest benefit of using a digital planner. Of course, when you're using a digital planner, it doesn't even have to be in the form of a digital planner. It could just be, you know, planning within Notion, planning within Google Calendar, plan within different types of apps, but I would say the most common is using the GoodNotes app and having an actual digital planner. So that's category number one. So the second thing that I would think about within choosing a planner is whether you want a bigger planner or a smaller planner. So basically the size of your planner. So for example, there are sizes ranging from, you know, really big, large or half letter discs to really small. So the Pocket or Passport TN, those different types of sizes. So first think about, do you want a big planner or do you want a small planner? And how you decide that is probably just how big you write, I would say, it's the easiest way to decide. So if you tend to write bigger, then you might want a bigger planner so that you can actually fit more stuff. And if you are a really teeny tiny writer, then just get a smaller planner because that is all that you need. The other thing I would think about is portability. Of course, a bigger planner is a lot heavier, it's harder to carry, whereas a smaller planner can fit in your purse and will be easy on the go. So that's the second major category to think about when you're choosing a planner. So the last thing to think about when you're choosing your planner is whether you want a bound system or a non-bound system. So like rings or discs, something where you can take the pages in and out and put them back in. Um, and when you're choosing this, I would think about if you're somebody who likes to really customize your planner, if you're okay with just having kind of one set layout that you'll use for the entire year. Because obviously in a bound notebook, it's much harder to add different layouts. You still can do it, you can you know do tip-ins and all that kind of stuff. But especially if you're having trouble using the planner already, I wouldn't advise doing all this fancy stuff and just choose one or the other system. And that's the three major things I would think about when you're choosing the planner size. And I have a bunch of videos that I'll link down below on how to choose between the different types of planners. So the second tip that I have for you is to actually have your planner open wherever you work or wherever you spend most of your time. So whether you're at home and you're around the kitchen a lot because you're watching kids during the day, have your planner open downstairs on the kitchen table. If you're in an office, have it open in your office. Just make sure that's visible because that's the only way that you'll use the planner is if you can easily access it. So by eliminating kind of that barrier to using it, it's more likely that you actually write things down in the planner instead of on some random sticky note that's sitting on your desk. Now, if you're using a digital planner, what I would say, obviously it's a little bit harder because it's just not completely in your site, but I would have that um, app as something that's extremely visible on your home screen, or if it's available in some sort of widget form, have that widget on your main screen. So when you're opening your phone, it's the first thing that you kind of see and easily, you can easily tap it so that you can easily access it and use it. And the third tip is probably the most important, I would say, in this video. And if you take anything away, take this away, and that's write everything down. Just write it all down. I think that's really the crux of planning and a lot of planning systems, for example, GTD or brain dumping or even bullet journaling. The whole concept and uh, the main thing that you need to do is just dump everything in your head onto your planner, right? 
because without doing that or if you're just keeping it in your head then you're not gonna have one common place where you know to go to and your brain will feel like it's still cluttered or you have to still remember things because you're kind of bouncing ideas all over the place and you don't have a common spot to write it down if you get into the routine of writing things down into your planner or that into that one common spot your brain will feel like it can start to let go of those ideas or tasks or whatever it is because now it knows that it can rely on your system and that you don't need to remember those things anymore. It sounds kind of funny, but I promise you, if you just try doing this one thing for 30 days, I swear it will help you so much in using your actual planner. And this is really the foundation, like I said, of GTD or getting things done by David Allen. It's a system that I've used for a long time. And that's really brain dumping, or if you guys have heard of the in terms of inbox or brain dump, it's really just writing everything in your head down and then organizing it or whatever. But those are steps I'll talk about in a later tip. So the takeaway here is please write everything down and it doesn't have to be pretty. I think a lot of the times we get really caught up, especially with social media on making spreads pretty. Like if I tried to my, make my planners pretty, I'd literally write nothing down because I have the worst handwriting. So. Just write it down, okay? You got that? Write it down. All right, so tip number four is to make this a habit. I kind of alluded to it already, and that's doing it for, you know, at least 30 days. Is that what the quote is or whatever? It takes 28 days to instill a habit, 20 days, something like that. Correct me down below if I'm wrong. But it takes a long time to make something a habit. So don't try for a week or two and just say it's not working or, you know, and give up because you need to really do it for a month. So the best way I would say is to do your planning maybe at the same time each day, whether it's in the morning or the night before, that will help you establish kind of a routine and make the habit a bit easier because you know you're doing it at the same time every single day and it just becomes part of the routine. So try writing things down in your planner and using that planner for 30 days and I guarantee you it'll really help you use your planner. So my last and final tip, and don't go using this tip until you've mastered the first four, is to find a system that works for you. Whether it's getting things done or Franklin Covey or bullet journaling, I feel like once you've narrowed down what you actually want to use and you've been consistent with using your planner, like in tips number one to four, then narrowing down to a specific system can help the longevity of your planning journey, I would say. Um, so for me, if you guys have seen my previous previous videos, you guys know that I use the getting things done method and it has really been a life changer for me, especially in my planning journey, but I didn't start doing that until I was pretty consistent with my planners. So those are my five tips for how to actually use your planner and I hope some of those could help you and if it does, please let me know down in the comments below. If you guys have any other tips that have really helped you, please let us know as well. And if you enjoyed this video, consider checking out this one right here and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.